I think we are good. We're going to get started, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to AI Academy. And um, before we get started, we'd like to share a few additional resources that we have available uh, to you that are available at all times. So you know that you can access our AI and intelligence community forum. There's a simple link for that, sn.works slash AI, and you can access a ton of content that uh, our experts are writing on the community side, and you can ask questions, and uh, everybody's helping everybody is out there so that uh, you can get your questions answered, everything related to AI. The, the academies are recorded, and then they are shared on the YouTube and the, the Now Community channel. So if you go on YouTube and look for ServiceNow Community, you have a ton of uh, recordings and videos of all the different topics, including AI. Also be aware that we have an AI, the Get Started with AI Solution course that's on Now Learning. There's also a related course uh, called AI Blueprints that uh, can be accessed, really good information for you if you're getting started with AI and uh, looking to ramp up your staff on that. And also, if you wanted to partner with ServiceNow in a, an effort to share data and accelerate the innovation on the AI side, you can join our global AI innovation program. And for that, you can use the email address that's written there. Uh, before we get started, uh, you know, we typically share content of uh, products that are available already on the platform. Uh, but if you have if you have questions about what's coming in the roadmap and we do answer that or we provide more context on that, then we will make sure to apply safe harbor notice there. Uh, it simply means that uh, as much as we like to share the roadmap with you, then uh, when it gets to the point of making a purchasing decision, it's always better to check with your account team about what's available at the time of purchase. I'm really happy to, to be joined by Mo today to talk about a specific uh, customer implementation. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Loic. And yeah, welcome everyone to our AI Academy webinar. Really excited today to be talking about how ServiceNow Impact can support you also drive better search experiences with AI search in your uh, organizations. So really excited to kick this off. And let me just move on. So in terms of our agenda for today, we'll be discussing about ServiceNow Impact, which is an, an offering for our customers. We provide uh, our product where we provide further support there and also talk about what the, with ServiceNow Impact, what are some of the accelerators that can help you accelerate your time to value and help you in terms of your product adoption there as well and also look in terms of uh, some recommendations when it comes with AI search specifically. So with that, let us just uh, get started and then talk in terms of ServiceNow Impact. So our customers are looking to accelerate their results and realize those sustained returns on their investments. So in order to help align their strategy and execution towards the business outcomes and help focus some of those more value-driving innovations and not ensure that they're not creating that gap between a future state vision and what their organization is able to achieve in the short term, we released uh, the solution ServiceNow Impact. So the point or while, why you uh, consider ServiceNow Impact is companies are under, under pressure to outpace and innovate. So, or many organizations are investing in technology solutions to drive that value. And in a recent report from IDC found that less than a third of them are successful in executing on those expected outcomes that they set. So we spent 24 months in analyzing our customer base and trying to understand how and where customers get value from the platform. And accordingly, this ServiceNow, uh, the, 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 we found common teams and hence why ServiceNow Impact was born there. So to show you first the pace of innovation, so all the obstacles that uh, you can imagine in today's environment as well, and economic climate there, there is also the pace of innovation that is increasing and customers' desired outcomes, your desired outcomes there, as well as the ability to adopt innovation, there is a value gap that is increasing there. So to address uh, some of those and also talk about what are the value gap drivers there, is also looking into lack of expertise here. 
So customers mentioning that their teams lack the right education support and tools to nail specific implementations. Or in terms of personalized guidance, so resources are sometimes too general. And if you need guidance, personalized guidance to your specific use cases there, this is also something that is addressed in impact. Then about time to value there. So how you can accelerate that time to value is another great aspect uh, that is addressed in impact. How that is addressed is that impact is a tech enabled value acceleration solution. So it provide, provides an enhanced support experience, access to our expert guidance, as well as on-demand training there. So it's all delivered through a premium digital experience and you can track and really manage your the value realization journey from your investment within ServiceNow. So as part of this, we how you can close that uh, the value gap there with ServiceNow Impact is this uh, these three pillars that we support you within the IDE. So that is the Impact Digital Experience. So our team here, which focuses on the Impact Accelerator Catalog, where we have certain AI capabilities and we provide accelerators to support customers in those offerings, accelerate their time to value and show them the out of the possible with such solutions. Now, in terms of focusing on some of these uh, accelerators that we provide as part of this, uh, of the impact offering, as you can see here, our team, which is the technical accelerators at scale team, supports some of these, uh, these are some of the, the offerings that we have there in regards to upgrades, virtual agent, tuning up your virtual agent if you're already live with the VA, as well as jumpstart your AI search and others. So if you have, if you're interested in certain, in these capabilities or have, uh, or in terms of just adopting them or looking into enhancing them, you have them already in your organization and trying to enhance them e even further, this is where a great, uh, you can, it's a great opportunity to take a look at these accelerators to support you there. And now to focus on some of the AI accelerators. So we currently support these accelerators uh, that you see here. There's Jumpstart Your AI Search, Jumpstart Your VA. So if you're just initially starting your journey with the VA or AI Search, there we can show you what is the out of the possible in a, di in a digital twin of your environment, which is a clone of your environment there. And we can enable AI Search there and show you what the out of the possible is with it. And there's also the virtual agent and uh, tune up your virtual agent that we support there, as well as expert connect, which is a special type of offering we have where you can engage a service now SME in any uh, subject there that you have in a one hour session with specific, uh, specific technical questions. So any uh, AI, AI related ones as well or capabilities that we have there. Those are also common questions uh, that were posed through this expert connect, ones relating to predictive intelligence, for instance, or if customers, impact customers are trying to understand what is in the AI roadmap or what are we thinking about and the direction service now is going towards. Now to focus on uh, a specific one that we have worked with with a recent customer, UKG. So in a jumpstart your AI search, I have worked with them in the uh, just in April there, and UKG were looking in terms of how they can optimize their search experience for their end users there. So AI search was the natural next step that they were taking. So we all know UKG is one of the leading HCM cloud solution providers there. They they work globally, have over seventy thousand customers globally that they support there. So in order to improve the, the search experience within their portals, AI search was a great capability because with it, there were not only the ease of implementation there, as you can see, they were implemented AI search and went live within four weeks of doing this accelerator. But also there is the localized and persona-based search experiences. So they have users, they're a global organization, their, their base there is all over the world. So if a user, and they, 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 have, uh, they work in US, for instance, in India, et cetera. So if there are users based in these different regions, they would like to get knowledge articles in those regions first presented to them. So localizing that experience is a great capability you can do with AI search. And also the great uh, enhancements with machine learning capabilities. So it looks at what your users are clicking, what they search for, and accordingly, it optimizes those search results. 
and results the Google-like type of handling and actionable results. So it's great outcomes that they realized as a result of this accelerator, which was which helped them accelerate their time to value with the AI search implementation, as well as reap the benefits of AI search for their user base there as well. So it's a great uh, the partnership there with UKG and in terms of improving their end user search experience. So now, not uh, just limiting it here. So how can you take this and apply it within your organizations as well? So if you leverage AI search today or are thinking about uh, uh, leveraging AI search, how could you analyze and improve that search experience? So there's multiple ways you can look at uh, for when looking at AI search that you can analyze your user base search results if you still not uh, considered using it to understand where you are with your search experience and how you can take your search experience in your organization to the next level. With that, there is the AI search analytics. So we provide you with an out of the box AI search analytics dashboard, which covers here are all the elements that are critical or variables that are critical in terms of measuring uh, search engines there. So elements like average click position. So where it tells you a measure of where your users are clicking, and self-solved rate, so click-through rate, such important variables that are important in terms of uh, search engines there, those are already provided for you out of the box. It really help you, helps the admins there dig deep and understand what their users are searching for or and are they getting the right results there. And some of the critical variables that I've just uh, mentioned there, so average click position, self-solved rate, so these are critical to measure and also ensure in terms of best practices. So for best practices, as you can see, the click-through rate there is ensuring it, ensuring it is above 50%. Your average click position, which is, as mentioned, a measure of where your users are clicking. So our goal there is to keep it below three. And then in terms of queries with no clicks and no results, that is uh, opportunities where you can further tune and improve your model there, your search relevancy model as well as indication that also could be indication that you either don't have the, the content coverage currently and possible areas where you can include uh, knowledge coverage there as well. So these are some critical variables to look at. But nonetheless, there are also tables that you can, so those, the dashboard there provides you a great overview. But if you want to dig deep and do a search analysis study, then you can also use some of these uh, tables that are available out of the box as well. So there's two sets of tables. One is the search signals table, and there's also the search suggestions table. And firstly, covering the search signal table. So this captures all user interactions. So let's say they search and click on a specific result there in your portals. This is the table that captures it. And this is the table that is also used in terms of your machine learning relevancy with AI search, which looks at what your users are searching for and clicking on. So as you can see here, the search query term, as well as exactly what they click on is also presented in this table. So this is what the AI search will utilize in order to improve your the, the relevancy model that you have as well on a continual basis. So this, the, the table here, the outcome of what how you can leverage it is you it provides you, if you group by description there and sort by descending order, you can get the top clicked uh, or highest interaction results, which are also displayed in the dashboard there. And you can get the whole list. You can export it if you need to uh, analyze further. But what you're, essentially, these records are your most clicked on or most popular records in your organization. So essentially, you need to ensure that they have the optimal user experience. So they're presented within the top five results. And as mentioned, our average click position best practice is top three. So ideally within the top three results there for my users. So I can check which records are much, much, most popular there and accordingly ensure they have the best right, the user experience. And are they, do we have any questions? Or... Yeah, there was a question on the, the Q&A. It's, uh, is the AI search analytics part of the advanced AI search management tools from the ServiceNow store? Correct. Uh, so there is the, the one of them. The, this, there is two dashboards or actually three dashboards that come with uh, AI search analytics. So this is part of the user experience dashboard, not the advanced AI search management tool. 
There is also two other dashboards, the search profile analytics, as well as the search index analytics. And those two dashboards come as part of the, the advanced AI search management tool plugin. Thank you. Thank you. And I will be demoing this very shortly uh, as well. And then we also have the other table, the search event table. So this is a great table. It also captures all the search events that occur in the different applications that you have there. So in here, there is also the click rank, which is captured, which is a great, which tells you exactly which result your user clicked on, which whether it's the first result, the second result, or the third result. So if you would like to also analyze, you were previously using Zinc and you currently use AI search, you want to realize what is your improvement in average click position that you have there, you can use this table as well to do that. So you can filter by the AI search profile, for instance, and that will provide you an option to go ahead and, and filter by AI search uh, profile as well. So you can see Zinc versus AI search, what your average click position or what your improvement in search quality is as well. And this can be done as well for AI search, not just uh, AI search versus Zinc. Then in terms of uh, some tuning recommendations, so there are AI search, obviously in terms of maintenance there, the bulk of maintenance effort is done by the machine learning uh, relevancy model. And out of the box, it's anyway a very, very capable uh, search engine there. However, there are several ways that you can, there are several tools that you can leverage in order to further optimize your search result there. So for instance, here in terms of a tool that you can use is result improvement rules. And this is a great tool that provides you the manual flexibility. So you can promote, boost, or block content depending on user context or business requirements. So for instance, user context, like I wanna have different sets of knowledge articles available for my users depending on their role, the location they're in, their, the region that they're in, there's quite a few uh, context variables that we have that you can leverage in order to personalize that uh, the, the search results even further for users. So that's what one AI search set up just using these result improvement rules, which take a minute to set up. And I'll show you an example of those. Those you can further then extend the functionality there and uh, present users localized or personalized experiences as well. Then there is the Synonym Dictionary, which uh, is another tool that you can leverage there. And here, the use case is you can expand search queries or acronyms by including the additional terms. So to give you an example there, if there is Wi-Fi, you can, or, or VPN, for instance, VPN, you could extend it out to virtual private networks. So the acronyms or the words there, those can be expanded with the use of uh, synonyms. But here, it should be taken into account to be cautious with the use of synonyms, as you, it could confuse your AI search model. So to give you an example, if you include an example that notebook is a synonym of laptop and you have a corporate writing notebook in your organization as a catalog item, whenever an end user searches for the notebook, then all computer results will be shown if you set that as a synonym as they work bidirectional. So it should be taken uh, in terms of the use of synonyms, you should be cautious with the usage. And we also have Metafield, which uh, since the Tokyo release is also taken into account as part of your, the machine learning there. So the effect of synonyms and result improvement rules is immediate. So whenever you publish, you add a result improvement rule or a synonym and you publish that the search profile, you will immediately see the effect of it. With Meta, it is taken into account as part of the machine learning relevancy model, which happens on every 30 day period. So that is uh, if certain conditions are met and that is there is enough click through rate. So with that, the meta field is taken, the, the effect of the meta field will not be immediate as seen with the synonyms or result improvement rules. But these are, as mentioned, tools that you can use to further optimize your models, but there is also the continuous learning that happens through the machine learning there. So as mentioned, it, it uses the search signal table there that captures what your users are searching for, what they click on, and that will be used to further optimize your search model on a continual basis. So it drastically reduces your maintenance effort of AI search as well. And are there any questions before we go ahead and move to a demo? Yeah, yeah, there, we have a few questions. Uh, again, I wanna emphasize on that point. Uh, it's really, really important 
Uh, you know, one of the challenges we have in large organizations is that the the the, the effort to maintain our system is is is, uh, is really a, a burden on us. And uh, having AI search, use machine learning to to improve over time and and learn from interaction is is really a, a key here to to allow large organizations to scale to scale. Uh, uh, with that being said, we have a few questions. Uh, somebody is asking if we can have custom persona based uh, like user slash HR profile fields. Like operation worker versus manager versus professional tech users. Yeah. So it currently uses the out of the box user context fields there that you have, but this is something uh, that we can take a look at as well. It is not current. If you have custom fields within, it works according to the ones that you have in your user table. So if you have custom fields there, then it's not taken uh, into account. Okay. And uh, somebody is asking us if what's the best way to try AI search out? Should we do it directly in prod or in a non-prod environment? Yeah. So it is obviously always uh, best to, to test it out in your lower environments and accordingly then enable it in your prod. So that out of the box AI search and it's very capable and the, the kicking, kicking in of the machine learning there, that is when you have enough click through rate. So that is when the, when the clicking or when the learning will happen is when it goes live in production as you, you need uh, enough click through rate there. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think that's a great point is, is that if you test that out in sub production, you won't be able to move all the training uh, to production. But because we mentioned impact accelerators, again, if you are an impact customers, you can have access to uh, most team and they can implement that for you on a, on a, a digital twin of your instance. So that's really the best way to go as well. Uh, yep. License to get these two additional plugins. I think the one we see on the screen. Yeah, as I understand, there's no licensing. So uh, AI search is a is a standard platform feature, but I'm not the best <laughs> to answer in terms of specific licensing capabilities. But I'll come back to you uh, with an answer there. Yeah, and I think that AI search data, data labeling tool is actually an innovation lab plugin, I think, and it's uh, free of charge. But again, check with your account team and uh, AI search admin console and advanced tools. Um, again, I, I'm almost sure it's free of charge, but uh, check with your account team. Do we need to, what do we need to do to enable AI search on the customer poll? So is the customer portal uh, the one of the service portals there that you've created? Because if, if that's the case, all you, I can, I will demo that in a second, actually, since we're already here. All you will need to do is just go to portals. And within portals, first you need to request AI search uh, before that. So that this is where you request AI search. You'll go to AI search status. And once uh, here, if you still have not requested AI search, there'll be a request AI search button. And once you request it, then AI, it will show you that AI search is ready. Once AI search is ready, then you can just go to the relevant portal that you have there. Let's say to give you an example, it's my service portal. And if you scroll down there, there will be an AI search. You can enable it uh, from here and connect the relevant search application. This is just loading, but it will be there up in a second. Yeah, so I think uh, on the AI intelligence community forum, we have been uh, get, getting started with AI search article that is gonna walk you through the steps of getting started to enable AI search on your polls and uh, on the next experience as well. So if you wanted to use uh, AI search as the platform search, and if you were using uh, next experience, you could do that. I recommend we uh, go to that get started article there for uh, the, all the information. Indeed. All right, I think we can get moving with the exercise and uh, we'll 
go back to the questions after. So in terms of the exercise uh, here, just we'll focus on today is how you can focus, improve as discussed, improve your, your search experience there. So there's multiple the dashboards uh, that you can use there. So as discussed, there is the user experience analytics dashboard. And there is also two other dashboards that you can leverage, the ones uh, that was just posed in the question that are part of the advanced AI search analytics tool. So those are the search index analytics, as well as the search profile analytics. And we'll come back to those. But we'll also, what you can leverage are those two tables, and then accordingly leverage this information once that just uh, loads you. And I have one open here. Just put it up here. And this is then the user uh, experience analytics dashboard. And you can click on the relevant application there. Let's say it's my employee center. And then I can go on the left panel and click on search analytics, which will take me to the AI search analytics dashboard. And within this dashboard, once it's uh, in this dashboard here, as you can see, I have the information first regarding my adoption of AI search, average response time. Then there are some critical variables that are also presented here in the bottom. Average click position, which tells you uh, a measure of where your users are clicking, the self-solved rate, which is your click-through rate, and then information around queries with no clicks and no results. And those ones are great tuning opportunities that you can uh, identify as well. And also looking at the table that we just shared in the, the deck there, the search event table, that also will show you around uh, the average click position once below five. Those are good considerations as tuning opportunities as well. Now with tuning opportunities, uh, I'll come back to the tuning opportunities just to show you the other dashboards as well. Uh, here, the search, there we go. So this is the search uh, index analytics dashboard. So with it here, as you can see, I have the total number of index documents I have, I have as part of this instance, them by index source as well. So those are the different tables that you include as part of your search capabilities. And then the different configurations uh, related to AI search there. And then there's also a second tab, which also looks into your queries that are run against each search profile that you have once by different languages and also aggregated over time. And you can change the time frame there as well. Now coming back to the, in terms of how AI search is, or how you can leverage these then to go ahead with tuning tools. So looking at queries with no results or uh, ones with um, no clicks there, those are great ones to go ahead and start using tuning tools to optimize those results. So to show you an example here, with result improvement rules, they lie in the search profile, which accommodates all our the search experience, how the end user's experience uh, looks like there. So I can show you first uh, an example here. If I just search for laptop, for instance, then I can be presented with certain um, articles or catalog items there. However, let's say I see a need to move this Windows 365 Cloud PC is a new uh, is a new catalog or a new product that I have within my organization, and I want to promote this up to the top whenever an end user searches for laptop. And this is, can be a great use case to use result improvement rules. So I can go ahead, create a result improvement rule for laptop. Whenever the query and here the start date and date are automatically populated. You can also increase that time there. And accordingly, I can include whenever the query contains a specific uh, query term there. So in this case, laptop, I can promote boost or block content depending on this query that I've, the search term that I've added or also any of the user context variables that you see here, whether it's department, job title, language, etc. So just now with that uh, example that we had there, if I whenever I search laptop, I would like Windows 365 Cloud PC to show up on the top. So I can just include that, update my result improvement rule, publish the search profile, which is an important step to do. 
And once you publish the search profile, I can just go ahead and reload that. Let's just reload. And as you can see now, the top result there is Windows 365 Cloud PC. So just with that simple change there, I can already start promoting results. So not only that, I can also do this by the, the user persona there. So to give you one more example there around how I can personalize content for my end users there. So let's say to give you a, a use case and you have your organization or your department, your users there in your development department, whenever a user in that in your dev community looks for a laptop, they should be presented with developer or development related laptops. So to show you that, for instance, we have here, if I search for developer laptop, or go. Oh, for a developer laptop, I do have a result here for a specific laptop that you see here, developer laptop. So I can present these results up on top whenever an AI, whenever a user there presents, uh, looks for that specific laptop. So how can I do that is just including a laptop here and then query contains, whenever it contains laptop and my user uh, context there, their department is, from the development, I would like to present the ones related to dev to them. So I just request here, put the two laptops that promote the two documents. And again, just publish, update my search, uh, the, the result improvement rule, publish my search profile. And I can go ahead and now, just search for laptop. And this is just without it. I'm not the user here. So as you can see, I'm not a, a this persona is not from dev. It's just the same results they're presented. However, if I impersonate a user from the development uh, department there and they search for laptop, as you can see here, the results, first results now that are presented are developer laptop and development laptop unlike my previous one. And this one is presented as the first one as I have there, I've also included the result improvement rule whenever a user searches for laptop presented first. So this is a great way. So to have for your different user uh, personas there, let's say the line HR, the IT users, if you wanna present different sets of results to them with just the same setup, this is a great way to go ahead and do it. And as you can see, just takes a minute to set up such uh, to set up such a result improvement rule. Then, yeah, are there any questions uh, on these result improvement rules and how you can improve performance? That was great. That was great. Thank you. Somebody is asking us, so on the topic of looking through the lens of different personas, uh, could we actually look at that analytics dashboard and filter the content based on a specific persona? So the user is captured um, here in the table that you have there, just to show you. And the long table name, but uh, this is the search. Or the impersonation. Okay, so it sounds like if we want more granularity in terms of which users are doing which query, we do need to use those tables. Uh, the yeah. dashboard itself probably will not get you the information. Uh, so using the tables uh, can get you there, uh, but that's also a great feedback for our product team that I can take and 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 pass on as uh, that's a in very interesting use case. I think we are good for today. Thank you so much for all the content today, Mo. And uh, I'm happy that we learned about impact and having that specific use case and learning about AI search, I'm sure was very, very uh, helpful for, for a lot of our participants today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.